Welcome to Xamega videos. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to build an end-to-end multi-tier.NET application with a WPF search form from Xamega object model based on what we have built in the previous videos. To recap what we have done so far, we have imported our object model from an existing database and then enriched it by defining the logical types in the model, the enumerations for possible values like the gender, uh, and the service layer operations. After that, we were able to generate an entity data model and the WCF service contracts from the model. Now we can use it all to build a running WPF application with a search form based on the read list operation. Before we start, let's run a couple of generators based on the enumerations that we have defined in the model. The first one will generate static constants so that we could refer to the enumeration values from within the code. Because it will be useful on both client and the server sides, we'll output them to the shared project adventureworks.services. So let's run the generator and include the generated file into the project. And here are the generated constants. The second generator assembles all enumerations into a simple XML file, which can be loaded at runtime to supply all enumeration values with their descriptions and any additional properties. Let's also include the generated file enumerations.xml into the project, which looks like this, and we'll embed it into the application by selecting the build action embedded resource. The form we're going to build will display a list of employees uh, and will allow searching them by certain criteria. This will be based on the read list operation of the employee object. So let's take a closer look to, at this operation. As an input, it takes a number of search criteria coupled with the corresponding operator. The logical type operator is actually defined in the framework and is represented by one of the predefined values based on the criteria type. As you can see, the last name doesn't have an operator, uh, which implies the equals operator. The higher date, though, uh, has two fields to support the between operator. And both the state and the zip code allow multiple values as the criteria. The operation output returns a, a list of structures with some basic employee information and the address structure that's included by reference. So let's now implement this operation using the entity data model and uh, Xamega framework. Instead of building implementation from scratch, scratch, let's just include an existing employee service class that implements the employee service interface and just review it. It extends the base Xamega class for all the services that are entity-based. As a template parameter, it uses the AdventureWorks entities object context that is generated from our entity model and is uh, exposed uh, from the base class to allow running the link queries uh, link to ent using the link to entities. So as you can see, our read list operation just builds a link query to return a list of employees in the right format. It also checks each operator if it's not null uh, and the value of the operator uh, to add the where clause to the link query. Note also that it's using the generated constants that we did before. So we also implemented the service method getStates that returns a list of different employee states. This is to populate a list of states to select from for the search criteria. We'll show you later how to use it with the Xamega framework. Keep in mind uh, that the service methods can be implemented in many different ways and you're not limited to using Xamega framework or link to entities. This is just an illustration of one of the implementations. The next thing we want to do is to generate Xamega framework data objects, which our form will be bound to. 
Oh, we need uh, one object for the criteria panel and one object for each row in the results grid. We can declare these objects in the model uh, by defining their class names in the config section of the corresponding operation structure. So the employee criteria in the input and the employee row object in the output. As a matter of fact, uh, these uh, config actions and the data objects have been already added to our uh, model when we ran the model CRUD operations generator. To generate the data objects, let's add a new project to our solution and we'll call it the adventureworks.client.objects. Let's click OK. All right. Let's add the references to our adventureworks.services and the Xomega framework, like this. And let's also make sure that our Xomega data object generator outputs to the new project. Let's run the generator and take a look at the generated files. We reload the project. So the generated files start with the underscore uh, to distinguish them easily from the non-generated files. Let's review the employee criteria class for our search criteria. This is a partial class that extends from the base Xamega data object and in is initialized by adding all the properties of the proper type. And one of the properties is employee state property, which is our custom property as specified in the configuration of the employee state logical type. Again, instead of building it from scratch, let's just add an existing state property to the project and review it. Here it is. Our state property just extends the Xamega base property for integer based enumerations and uh, supplies its own lookup table by calling the getStates method, which in turn uh, just calls our service method getStates. Now we are finally ready to go ahead and start building a WPF employee search form. So let's add a new WPF project and call it adventureworks.client.wpf. Let's hit OK. We'll delete the default window uh, and uh, add references to the services and object projects like this. Let's also update the project configuration file to end the endpoints, the client endpoints for our services. Actually, we can just do it by configuring and running the uh, WCF client configuration generator like this. Let's also make some minor updates to the application XAML file. First off, we'll define a validation template that displays a, a red asterisk next to an invalid field. Then we'll define a label style that makes the labels bold for required fields, the operator style and the control style that is using our validation template. In the application file code behind, we'll um, load uh, our enumerations.xml that we generated in the beginning of the video into the Xamega lookup cache during the application startup. And we'll also handle all the service errors and the unhandled exceptions by just displaying a message box. Now let's configure our WPF search form generator. We can set the output path and the form name and the namespace, but the real trick is to be able to point it to the read list operation in the object model. To do that, the generator allows us to specify the class name of the data object for the result list rows from here. That not only allows us identify the operation, but also guarantees that such object is defined and will be generated. Okay, let's run the generator and uh, include the generated form into our um, project and just take a look at it. 
As you can see, the form has proper controls for search criteria laid out in two columns at the top, the search and reset buttons, and the results grid down below. All controls are automatically bound to the corresponding data object properties in the XAML. The code behind is also generated to initialize and bind our data objects and to call our service method read list upon clicking the search button. Now let's set our WPF project as a startup project. Make sure our WPF form is the startup URI for the application. And let's hit a five to run and see what we have uh, built so far. The form comes up as expected with all criteria blank and clicking search just returns all employees. Note that the gender values are decoded based on our enumeration that we define in the model. The operators from our model are displayed in the criteria dropdown lists and they depend on the criteria type and whether or not the criteria are multi-valued. Each operator typically has an inverse operator to exclude the selected values. Selecting the operators automatically displays one or two values next to the operator. So let's pick the equals operator and we'll just uh, leave the field blank for now. The red asterisk from our validation template immediately shows that the field is now required. Clicking the search also shows this message. A similar error is displayed if we supply an invalid date. Let's make it July 1st of the um, 2001. Also note that the value is automatically formatted when we leave the field. All this uh, behavior is taken care of by the operator property and the date property that uh, from Xomega framework that our controls are bound to. Let's also filter by states. If you remember our employee state property reads the list of possible values by calling the service method. As you can see, we have just built a powerful, flexible, and fully featured employee search form with little to no coding on the client side and a simple implementation of the server side method. Yeah, it's that easy. In the following videos, we're going to show you how to build a WPF details form with Xomega and then how to build the same forms in Silverlight if you need a rich internet application. Thank you for watching.